Aaron Copeland, the Dean of American Composers. He was born in 1900 and died in 1990. And us having focused on a lot of European composers, now we go all the way to America, where we're looking at a Brooklyn-born Jewish composer who was also a conductor. A lot of the people we've been looking at were composers, but he was also a conductor, both of his own music and other people's music. He was born in 1900 to a Jewish family in Brooklyn, New York. And though his father was not musically interested as much, his mom did see a lot of worthy investment based towards music. And so she invested, she was the one who always opted in them getting music lessons, him and his siblings. He had one brother who was the most advanced with his instrument in the violin, his name was Roth, but it was his sister who had a greater influence upon him. His older sister took the responsibility of being his first piano teacher. And it was very obvious that at a young age, he was very skilled in this instrument. By the time it, he was tw around 20 years old, he decided to move to Paris. And in the 1920s, the Parisian scene was absolutely booming. This was the place where everything was cool, classy, and fashionable. Kind of like, what is cool, classy, and fashionable now? Is it America? I guess so, because that's where all the hip-hop artists, all the rap artists, all the cool people, all the YouTube video personnel seem to be coming from. But at this time in the 1920s it was Paris. So Aaron Copeland decided to go to Paris just to learn from the greatest of styles at the time and also from very musically talented people. Having gone to Europe and having seen that most of the composers there were very focused on making music that defined the nation, that signified their own countries, like Chopin defining Poland, like George Friedrich Handel, which country did he try to define? The thing is though, Handel wasn't actually as focused on his own country because he was a Baroque composer. So you'd have to focus on the Romantic composers, such as the ones we've just looked at. Can you name one? One in Norway, Edvard Grieg, yeah, focused on his country. And the one we just looked at, Rafe Van Williams, who was focused on making music for England. So having seen this and just having come out of the Romantic era, Aaron Copeland is a 20th century composer, but yet the romantic era style of a lot of composers rubbed off on him. And so he also wanted to make music that defined his nation, which was the United States of America. So he comes back to the United States of America, having learned from a lot of European composers, and he ends up making ballets that had very American themes, such as westerns, where you had the sheriff and you had the outlaw, and they're going out and they're getting a gunsling, or they're about to have a, sh a showdown against one another. Interesting stuff. So westerns, Pioneers, like when people discovered new things, created new technologies, found a gold mine, and just small town life. So that's what he came back to America to make music for. However, today's piece is inspired by not just different themes in the country, but by a specific person. It is inspired by the 16th President of the United States of America, and this is Abraham Lincoln. The piece we're looking at today is called Lincoln's Portrait. So, in the early 1940s, this time Aaron Copeland is 40 years old, and America is entrenched in World War II, and obviously for any country that is participating in a war, morale is going to be low, people are going to be disheartened, people are going to be full of anxiety, wondering how will our nation triumph over this. The same way as right now, we're looking at how is our nation, how is the world going to triumph over this disease that is plaguing us and causing us to stay at home. It's, kind, it's a slightly similar to words what happens to a country in wartime. But this is, war is obviously a lot more brutal because people lose family members. So in an effort to celebrate the greatness of the land, there was a famous composer, a, sorry, a famous conductor, who invited three composers to create, to select one famous or eminent, eminent is just another word for famous, American, and to create a piece of music that would define that eminent American. So out of the three composers, the first composer couldn't really make up their mind, so they chose two people. They chose the 99th mayor of New York, can okay, you imagine that, the 99th mayor of New York back in the 1940s, and Dorothy Parker, who was a very famous American poet, and actually still is, and has had a major influence upon them. The second composer, and Copeland, actually settled on the same person, Mark Twain, but this was a problem, because you can't really share the same person as another composer. So... Kenneth Copeland, I mean, sorry, Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> so Aaron Copeland decided to settle upon the 16th president of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln. 
obviously there, there is no music that can really be ascribed to such a great personality and such a great man as Abraham Lincoln. Look at what he had to do in abolishing the slave trade. He said he, if he could neither be a slave, then he could neither be a master. Or was it vice versa? I'm not too sure. But anyway, he had a big role to play in the abolition of the slave trade, so Copeland chose him. At the end of it all, he said his music couldn't put Lincoln's, couldn't put, Link, wasn't good enough for Lincoln to describe Lincoln. And so he decided instead to put Lincoln's words into the piece. And so the piece described, act as a setting, act as a background, act as the foundation upon the words of which Lincoln had once spoken. So the piece was a smashing success and has been performed countless times with people like Neil Armstrong, the first person on the moon, making the narration of Abraham Lincoln's words. You have Tom Hanks, a very famous actor, also doing the narration. You also have the former president of the United States of America, Barack Obama, who has also done the narration. But in today's piece, you're going to see Aaron Copeland, who is the one doing the narration. So you actually get to see him in real life. This is one of the few composers who is closest to us compared to all the other ones who are way back. In fact, remember, he died in 1990. That's just before some, some of us were born, or even just right after some of us were born. So this piece is slightly long, but try and get through it. It's actually, it has a lot of depth towards it. And listen to the words that Lincoln was saying. And I'll see you in part two. <laughs> 